If you are new to my channel, my name is Unwana Udo. Every week, I share content on how to improve your personal finance and grow your wealth. In today's video, we will look at the issue of poverty in the United States. I was compelled to make this video to draw attention to poverty and the root causes. Nobody wants to live in poverty. Unfortunately, poverty will continue to be an issue in society. This might be a controversial video and I know I might get some pushback. My goal here is just to bring to light the issue of poverty and what we can do to minimize this. Don't get me wrong, no matter what solutions we come up with, poverty will always be a part of life. It is basic human nature that there will be a segment of society that will end up in poverty through no fault of their own. Our current educational system fails to teach us personal finance and wealth creation. The only way to ensure that you are financially sound is to take responsibility for your financial future and getting the right financial education. What is poverty? Poverty is a human condition of not being able to provide a standard level of food, water, and shelter. It exists in every country in varying degrees, and it is unlikely to go away anytime soon. The United States is considered one of the richest countries in the world, yet millions of its citizens live in abject poverty. There are two ways in which poverty is measured. 1. Absolute poverty. 2. Relative poverty. Absolute poverty looks at the goods and services a family or individual cannot obtain, while relative poverty looks at the context of the need, how a social group compares to other social groups. The official method of calculating America's poverty levels was developed in the 1960s and has not been refined since then. Some critics maintain that the United States government overstates the poverty level because it counts as impoverished people who in generations past would be considered as not living in poverty. The highest poverty rate on record was 22% back in the 1950s, and the lowest was 11.1% .1 in 1973. Among the most impoverished are those living in female-headed households with no husband present, 31.2%, young adults without a high school diploma, 31% overall, 43% for blacks, those living in a family whose head of household is unemployed, 32.9%, minorities, 27.6% for blacks, the face of poverty for most Americans is that of families in dilapidated houses in large cities where factories have left. Poverty is also found in rural areas of the south and southwest regions of the United States where living conditions are even more run down. Seven of the ten states with the highest poverty rates in the U.S. are in the south. This includes Mississippi, 20.8% of population below the poverty line, Louisiana, 20%, Kentucky, 18.5%, West Virginia, 17.9%, Arkansas, 17.2%, Alabama, 17.1%, and Georgia, 16%. The other three are all in the Southwest and include New Mexico, 19.8%, Arizona, 16.4%, and Oklahoma, 16.3%. These areas have a long history of poverty and there are many factors that contribute to it. The most obvious is that they all had agricultural economies with less emphasis on education and technology. Impoverished families tend to have less education, more health problems, and less access to nutritious food. They also live in high crime areas. The more advanced your education, the greater the likelihood of you achieving a more secure financial future. High school graduation rates for African American and Hispanic students are almost 20% lower than for other ethnic groups, while their poverty rates greatly exceed the average rate. Without the right knowledge and skills, each succeeding generation of undereducated adults merely replaces the one before it without achieving any upward mobility and escape from poverty. Health is also highly related to income. Poor people have higher mortality rates, higher prevalence of chronic diseases, emotional and behavioral issues. People in the highest income group live an average of 6.5 years longer than those in the lower income group. The mortality rate for African American infants is double that of white infants. Poor adults are twice as likely to have diabetes as affluent adults. Poor children are twice as likely to have unhealthy levels of lead in their blood than other children. 
The relationship between poverty and crime is complex, and many factors are associated with poverty and crime, such as unemployment, population density, high school dropout rate, and drug use. While difficult to quantify, some studies have indicated that as a particular population's poverty rate increases, violent crimes increase as well. These are very depressing statistics even though the government has tried to intervene with social programs. Government benefits keep millions of Americans out of poverty, mostly women, children, and the elderly. Social security alone keeps approximately 21.4 million people above the poverty line, including 14.5 million senior citizens 65 years or older. Expanded unemployment benefits helped an additional 2.3 million people stave off poverty in 2011. In addition, the combined earned income tax credit and child tax credit kept 9.2 million families from falling into poverty in 2010. Here is a list of other government programs instituted to help eradicate poverty. Community Services Block Grant Head Start Low Income Home Energy Assistance Medicaid Medicare Prescription Drug Coverage Family Planning Services Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, SNAP, formerly known as Food Stamps Special Supplemental Nutrition Program for Women, Infants, and Children, WIC National School Lunch and Breakfast Programs Legal Services Jobs Corps it is evident that even with all the government programs and billions or even trillions of dollars spent on poverty, we are still nowhere close to eradicating poverty. Some state and local governments provide programs for the poor, as do some private companies and charities. What can we do to minimize poverty? The first is education. Having the right educational system is the quickest way to uplift individuals. Without the right education, most individuals will never have the opportunity to better themselves. Reducing the dropout rates from school will ensure that we have a well-educated and trained workforce. For most people, having an education is the ticket to getting out of poverty. Poverty will always be an issue, however, we all can do our part to minimize its impact on society. I hope this video sheds light on the issue of poverty in the United States. Leave your comments below on what ideas you have on how we as a society can tackle poverty, I look forward to your comments. If you found value so far, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more great content. The next video on the screen contains information you will love. Click to watch that video now and I will see you there.